Hey, tubers. I thought I'd do a video about scrounging, because I'm such a scrounger of electronics. And I noticed a few things that are available out there that are kind of cool, that are seem, seem to be popping up. One of the things is with everything going to switching mode power supplies, it's getting harder and harder to find good fat transformers well these are really going out of style i've picked up three of these in uh, the last year in like value village and the thrift store and stuff and what these are is a transformer for a lighting system outdoors called moon rays that's kind of gone by the wayside it's actually a really good system i i, I like it it's low voltage ac but the cool thing about it is that the output on this some are 12 and some are 24 this one's 12 but um, when you look at it it's it's 60 watts eh? so you know for example I was just watching a video that Tin Man put together and he was talking about voltage doubling and whatnot well that you know with a nice transformer like this for example you can get a you can get 30 watts at 24 volts or you know in theory somewhere somewhere in that department right so with this if you're let's say you're pulling 12 volts and 5 amps for 60 watts well you're still going to be able to pull two and a half amps at uh, at 24 volts with a voltage doubler off of a transformer like this and you know you also get when you scrounge one of these up you get a timing circuit inside of these because you see that's a little uh if you look I don't know if I can anyways that's a that's one of those light dependent resistors LDRs in there so it's gonna have a nice little circuit for switching stuff on probably a, a relay in there as well and the other thing is is these these UPS's um, I've been uh, scrounging these up and this this is a big boy eh? this one's like a, a 1750 watt UPS 30 amp 120 volt unit and there's lots of good stuff on on this you've got a whole like a, that big fat transformer over there I haven't figured out how I'm actually going to use it though because it only has like 0.6 ohms on the, on the primary so I guess the way that that is used, and you can correct me if you know more about this than me, but I guess the way that it's used is, is the moment these big relays open up AC current, um, it, it, it has somewhere for it to go, so it gets magnetically coupled immediately, because I mean, if you were to plug that into the wall, you'd, you'd see, you'd be popping breakers with that little resistance and uh, I mean I could be wrong if you had a 30 amp circuit maybe you can plug it in but I ain't gonna try um, the other thing is of course you get some electrolytics I was a little dis disappointed I thought maybe I'd get some better ones but those would be alright those are 1500 microfarad 75 volts you get a really nice rack of, uh, of rectifiers on here there's like oh shit 20 of them or something and you get some really interesting ICs uh, which is one of one of the things that I was after you get some very nice 12 volt relays these are these are uh, like two horsepower relays so those are those are good for for all kinds of projects some nice toroid jokes um, but it's got some interesting uh, it's got five really nice, uh, I think they're six tens or something, they're five thirties. Some nice fets there. IRF six tens, yeah, so you get five of those. And then um, it's got some interesting stuff on it actually. It's got uh, one, uh, one chip on here called a 7-4, what is it, H? I read it. 74HCT257N, which is 
oh this is getting into the into my gray area but I believe what that is is like a quad or double uh, two input multiplexer so you can take information and send that down a data line that would be to do with this thing sending information back through Ethernet and like on a data line transmission for example you can you can you can take multiple inputs of information and then send them down one data line so when you're building chargers and solar controllers and stuff and you want to um, combine that with uh, with uh, little programs using Arduino and uh, pickaxe and stuff and talk to a PC or for example if you wanted to build an application where you could have a smartphone that would tell you what's going on with your system those are the type of ICs that you would be wanting to use uh, in something like that possibly it's got a couple of uh, LM 393's which are like um, either dual or quad differential voltage comparators uh, you get this is a neat uh, thing you get a, uh, a where is it now it's a TL 064 CN which is a JFET quad op amp and um, that little chip there uh, if I'm not mistaken can be set up as a bubble oscillator and you can build your own um, sine wave inverters you know there's a, a really good project on our on our IAEC website for about 60 bucks you can build your own basic uh, pure sine wave inverter and uh, with this you also get the current transformer and then the logic chip that probably goes with that I'm just looking here trying to see it oh uh, yeah this um, what is it now VC3843 AN which is like a pulse width modulator current uh, mode modulator that will allow you to detect currents and input currents output currents and uh, set up your pulse width modulation which is something that I've been studying with inverters um, one of the flip-flop inverters that I messed around with I uh, I put in a PWM but there's a much more logical way about it and it, it acts sort of like a feedback loop in the sense that you're constantly adjusting your available uh, current for the available required load using these small current transformers but you can use those for all kinds of stuff and uh, and including when you make your own uh, charge control systems um, with solar for example it's nice to have a current transformer so that you can detect current trans uh, um, through that toroid your current runs through here for example and uh, then feed that back to um, a pick controller or Arduino or whatever and, and have monitoring of current um, the other the other neat application that I want to do with that particular uh, little bad boy there is for example on a um, MPPT charge controller one of the ones I have is a 30 amp well it won't do any charging of batteries at under one amp so the way I see it that's the perfect opportunity to put into place a current current sensing circuit that realizes that there's less than one amp of current coming off of that panel array, a small array, for example, on a really horrible day. And then send that send that down the line to a, a Bedini style um, desulfation circuit. So when you have less than an amp coming in, you can then use your solid state Bedini instead of instead of your MPPT. And then as soon as it exceeds an amp of input screw the Bedini and go over to uh, MPPT charge and get some real charging done and uh, then um, you can go back and forth and then you know as well use your like this you, you, your, your logic would then open up different relays and, 
enable that to, to happen. But those are those are some of the things that you know I've been finding, and uh, so keep, keep your eyes out for this sort of stuff because what I'm finding is is that you know like you can see those big battery banks. That's what the, these things charge, and I get all those for free. And uh, what you find is that a lot of office buildings they they basically have like a five year term, and they junk all this shit. And they don't try to sell it or nothing, so you got to figure out where it goes and when it goes where. And uh, you know, you just get hundreds of dollars worth of stuff for nothing. And uh, you know, for the enthusiast, it's great because you get to play around with stuff. And if you fry it, fuck whatever, right? You know, it's free. Come free, anyways, right? So um, you know, it's it's been a real great learning resource for me because I've been quite brave about what I wire up and uh, you know if you don't get it right the first time oh well it was free you know no big deal and there's more where that came from kind of thing so there's my uh, my scrounging tips for for uh, for the month or whatever thanks for watching